Hello hobbyists, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James and today we have the first of three videos we're gonna do on the Nexa P40. Um, again, this is a Balsa ARF aircraft, one of the newer uh, aircrafts to Motion RC's website uh, coming from our Nexa lineup and uh, she's pretty stunning. It took me about three days to get to this point where we were all done. That was in about three, four hour spurts, if you will. Uh, anybody who's ever built an ARF uh, or assembled an ARF knows it does take some time and that's why we're going to do a three-part video series. So in this first video, what we're going to show you today is a full unboxing. So we're going to show you everything that comes out of this kit. Um, we think it's a good representation of most of the single engine warbirds you're going to see from Nexa. Uh, obviously we can't do every single one. Um, we're going to try to do as many as we can. But uh, being that this is the first one we're doing, uh, it should give you a good idea of what you get out of the kit. Again, you'll see all the parts. Then we'll go through the spec of the aircraft as well and talk about all the recommended setups. Again, these models, the all these ARFs can be set up to be flown either electric or with gas so we could talk about those recommended setups. That's all listed on our website as well. Uh, for the sake of this one though, we set it up with one of our Admiral Motors uh, electric power. She's going to be running on 6S and uh, I'm excited to get her in the air as the point of this video yet. I have not maidened her. So that'll be in the last video. So guys, again, she comes comes in an awesome Chinese theater uh, scheme. This is the Flying Tiger scheme. Uh, a lot of fame in World War II over there, I believe. Something like 297 uh, kills air-to-air -air combat versus four losses from the P-40s of the AVG um, that the scheme is represented in. So uh, that's pretty darn good. And she looks great out of the box. Again, when you get these kits, everything is going to come covered. So uh, with an ARF, you don't have to do any sort of covering. You are basically just just assembling and you do have to do a little legwork. So I say let's get started with an unboxing, then we'll talk about the specs, then we're going to talk about all the things you're going to need for the assembly. So let's get started. All right, so starting with the unboxing, guys, when you open the box for the uh, Nexa aircraft, now, when you get something from Motion RC, you'll see in my box that I ordered a lot of the recommended parts that were already on the box, so our company takes the time to open the box and tapes that in to the box. So yours might look a little different if you didn't order all your electronics, your servos from us, but uh, that's what Motion RC likes to do to save in shipping, save you the hassle. We will fit it in there and tape it in there beautifully. So once you get those out, again, um, I'm using the servos, the motor, everything that's recommended on Motion RC's website. But once you get past that, you can see everything's taped down beautifully, and um, I didn't see anything uh, out of the ordinary as far as how it's packaged. It looks like it's all going to be uh, in a nice, orderly fashion. So the first thing out of the box you're going to see you get your manual and it's a pretty comprehensive manual. Um, I followed it step by step which you're going to see in the second video when we do a step by step assembly. Um, it was pretty easy to follow again has all the recommended features the spec and everything in there so it uh, was nice to see a well thought out manual. One of the first things I pulled out of the box are all your plastic bits, uh, your shields on the bottoms and the wings, you have uh, bits for your landing gear and such and those are the last things you're ever going to put on the model anyway. Then we get to our rudder, which comes again. She's already covered, and I love the uh, white and blue stripes, but very nice. They also have the hinges. They're the pin nylon hinges are already in there um, with the uh, rudder, which is awesome as well. And you will want to check these hinges because uh, they do a lot of the hinges for you. As you'll see with the wings, the ailerons and the flaps are already pre-hinged and secure. They're done. But with the rudder, they, um, they glued them into just the rudder side. You will have to put them on the fuselage. But one of mine was loose, so just make sure you might want to go tug on all of them and uh, you might have to secure some down. Next coming out was our horizontal stabilizer. And again, these hinges are not done for you. They just press them in, but you want to pull them apart. You're not going to be able to get the horizontal stabilizer through the fuselage um, if these were already completed. So, uh, but either way, nicely covered again. I love the panel lines and the rivets that they have on the, uh, on the covering. Looks really nice and uh, it's nice and straight as well. 
The next out of the box is the fuselage. So pulling it out and just taking a look at it, she's really nicely put together. Again, the pilot is already installed inside. The canopy is already screwed in. So uh, a lot of that work is already done, which is which I love. I know with some other ARFs, I'm not a fan of doing canopy glue and trying to glue on a canopy and doing all that. So it's nice to see that that's already complete. You can see your firewall is already there and it's already set at the offset thrust angle. So um, that helps in the later stages when you go to install your engine, you're already getting that thrust line um, built into the firewall, which is beautiful. Taking a look inside the canopy, you can see that there's ample space in there. I mean, it is a smaller cavity, but uh, once you get inside, should have no problem fitting a six that up to a 6006 s lipo or a fuel tank or anything else you're going to need and you have easy access through the bottom so taking a look through the bottom you can see it's all pre-done as far as obviously your balsa wood but they got the tubings already in there for your rods for your elevators and your rudder uh, and all around really nicely done. And the roundels on the fuselage, they're part of the covering. So you're just gonna add the decals, the extra decals later, like the number, the flying tiger, and, the, uh, and such. But the uh, roundels and the panel lines already done on the fuselage. And overall, I, I'm really liking this kit thus far. Next we're going to pull out is our baggie of accessories. So inside of here you're going to find all the hardware. I didn't pull it all out, but it's all sectioned off really nicely. Whereas when you grab a bag for a step, everything you're going to need for that step will be in one little bag. You're not going to have to look around for things. But in here you're going to get your spinner. Now keep in mind your spinner is a three blade. You're going to need a three blade prop if you're planning on using the spinner that comes with this model. So just keep that in mind for later. But again, you're getting hinges, you're getting screws, you're getting nylon bolts, you're getting everything you need in here to complete this assembly. The next we're going to have our cowl coming out and again she's fiberglass which is awesome. Then on the side of the box you're going to get a bag, a long bag, that's going to have all your rods and such. So it's going to have your elevator rods, it's going to have your aileron and flap rods in there as well, your rudder rod. They already have the clevises installed on the rods as well. And then in here, if you're going to go with gas, they also give you everything you need for your throttle and such to uh, get through there. So just make sure you don't throw out the box and, and not notice that big piece uh, taped along the side. Then lastly, the last thing you'll put on the box on the bottom are going to be your wing sections. And they're put together nicely, one on top of the other. And again, they are mostly completed as far as all the hinge work. You are not going to have to do any hinging on the ailerons or the flaps, which is really nice. So just looking around them, you can see on each wing you have two servo pockets. So you're going to have four total servos in your wings. So two flaps and two ailerons. Uh, it's nice that the split flap hinging is uh, done and the split flaps look really good on this model. And you can see also your landing gear is pre-installed. So that's another big, big bonus and they already routed the wire through. So they also have little uh, threading in there so that you're gonna be able to pull your uh, servo leads through the, uh, the pockets once you get your servos installed. But overall, really nice. Again, the roundel on the wing is part of the covering. It's not a decal, so it looks really good. They got the riveting throughout and the panel lines. I'm excited and once this is done this is going to be a one piece wing so you're going to eventually epoxy these two together with the included wooden spar and you're going to be all good to go. So there you have it guys that's everything laid out on the table before you uh, that comes with this Nexa P40 kit. Overall I'm pretty impressed taking it out of the box got really excited uh, as you start seeing what it's going to look like uh, in person as with any ARF kit once you get one if you're into building these things that excitement of having it all laid out there and getting ready to begin uh, is, is definitely a joy of an ARF kit. So now that we are done with the unboxing, let's talk about the spec of this P40 from Nexa. All right, so now as for the product specifications and the product recommendations for this model, we'll start with the spec. The wingspan on this bird is 1570 millimeters. It's about 61 and a half inches, so it's a very nice size bird. Her length is 1360 millimeters, or about 53 and a half uh, inches long. Now her flying weight, I have mine all completed electric. She's about nine and a half pounds. So it's gonna be different. It's gonna vary depending if you're gonna fly uh, with gas, but uh, that's what I'm getting on the electric. Again, with the recommended setups that we're gonna talk about in a little bit. 
To complete this model, you're going to need at least six servos if you are going for a, an electric setup. Again, two aileron, two flap, one elevator, and one rudder. And then if you're going with a gas setup, you will need a seventh servo uh, to control your throttle. The recommendations as far as the book goes, if you're going to go with a 62 cycle engine, they're calling it for a 12 by 6 propeller. For a 94 cycle, you're going for a 13 by 7. And then for electric, they recommend a 14 by 8. I actually have a 15 by 7 on here uh, and I'm getting great readings from my watt meter that we'll end up talking about in a separate video. So those are the specifications. Now let's talk about some of our recommendations um, on Motion RC's website. Again, we are going with an Admiral GP10 uh, brushless outrunner motor. She's rated for 60 amps, so we went with a Mantis 65 amp ESC, and we'll be flying it with an Admiral 6006S LiPo. We use six high-techs HS485HB servos, and they all fit perfectly uh, in this model. As you're going to see in the next video when we assemble, all the servo pockets, it's almost as if they were made for this servo size specifically. So it was a perfect setup there. Now some other bits and pieces you're going to need to complete an ARF. Obviously you're going to want to have all the tools. So you're definitely going to need an X-Acto knife or some sort of hobby knife. You're going to want pliers, screwdrivers, things of that nature. Also though, you're going to want extensions because you're going to have to run extension leads from your ailerons at least and your flaps to get them up into the fuselage. So keep that in mind if you're going to order an ARF kit uh, of any kind. You're going to need these little bits and pieces to help finish off your model. And one of the handiest tools for an ARF is going to be your hand drill uh, like you see here. Something that you're going to be able to, um, you know, pre-drill all your holes. You never want to just send a screw through wood without pre-drilling. Uh, it's pretty imperative to make sure um, you do it and you end up doing it a lot with an ARF kit. So we have this one here from Benchcraft and it'll work perfect for your needs. And then also you're going to want epoxies and CAs, uh, of course, to get this done. I ended up using epoxy, as you're going to see in the assembly, for a majority of my hinging, but I use CA glue in other spaces from thin to medium. So if you're getting into the ARF building phase, you'll probably have these materials, but if you're new to this, these are things you're definitely going to want to buy, and we have plenty from Benchcraft. Check the link in the description for all of these tools that you might need. All right, guys, so that'll do it for video one of this three-part video series. We wanted to show you everything laid out on the uh, table as far as how it comes out of the box. We want to go over the recommendations and the specifications and the stuff you're going to need to get to video two. But also, a lot of guys who have built ARF kits, the next video as far as assembly, you might not even want to watch because you know what you're doing. Um, the next video is going to be more for if this is your first ARF kit because a lot of people who might be Motion RC customers um, might have only just recently seen that we started to carry more ARFs and you might want to jump into the ARF game and I'm telling you it is definitely uh, worth it. So in the next video we're going to do a full assembly. We're going to go through each step of the manual and uh, we didn't want to include it in this video because it would just make it too long. So uh, if you're going to stay in the playlist uh, head over to the next video. If you're going to be leaving us thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoy the uh, Nexa P40 but also check out all the other Nexa aircraft. Links are going to be in the description and uh, most of the single engine warbirds, like I've seen the Hurricane in person, they're all going to tend to have similarities to them as far as what comes out of the kit. So this is a pretty good representation of uh, the Nexa lineup, and we hope you guys enjoy it. So thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time at Motion RC.